Then he said, no, no, no. He's, I'm going to do this. You got to stick your foot up their ass sometimes. I doesn't quite understand his potential yet. There's nobody in that team as talented as DeAndre Swift on the offensive side of the ball. His ability to put his foot in the ground and take off. That's special. So what Deuce Staley's trying to get out of him is, yeah, you can, bro. You can do this. The lines are going to be a problem. Probably the best interaction between a player and coach yesterday was Deuce Staley and Swift. DeAndre Swift is special, man. He has it. I think we can all agree on that. He does have it, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, Terry, did you have an issue with the way Deuce was coaching him? And not necessarily showing him the holes he missed or motivating to be disciplined. I love that he was telling him, be disciplined, be disciplined. Hit the hole. Be patient. It's going to come. The home run's going to come. I loved all that. But did you take issue with him in the film room saying, why are you going out? Why are you hitting the sideline? Why are you making it easy for the other team to tackle you? Be greedy for every yard. Do you think that's not the right mindset to have with a running back like a DeAndre Swift? Or, no, you got to toughen him up. you got to get him to be more aggressive. you you got to toughen him up. Now, here's the thing that Deuce Staley said before that. I'm going to try to make him think he's the best running back in the NFL. And he said, then he said, no, no, no. He's, I'm going to do this. I'm not try, but... You know, as a coach, you have to be who you are. Now, Deuce Staley starts coaching him a different way and is a Mr. Pity Pat, then DeAndre Swift is going to know he's not being sincere. But if you're going to motivate somebody in professional sports to be the best that they can be, you can't be Mr. Uh, Paddlefoot. You got to stick your foot up their ass sometimes. I, I didn't have an issue with it. I, I do agree. Uh -huh. I think that's the way you need to be coached. And look, let's be honest here. You don't coach somebody softly and expect them to get better. I mean, there are some cases, but the reality is everybody wants to be coached hard. Everybody, including DeAndre Swift. And Swift comes off to me, just from the Hard Knocks episodes. I, I wouldn't say it's timid, but reserved. I would say reserved. He's not as boisterous as Jamal Williams or outgoing. Yeah, we haven't uh, seen him break the team down yet. No, and I don't think we need to. But he's a guy that I think is very reserved, who doesn't quite understand his potential yet. Obviously, he's working his butt off. There's nobody in that team as talented as DeAndre Swift on the offensive side of the ball. Nobody. Nobody is talented, especially at skill positions. So if Deuce is correct... And if Deuce is able to accomplish his goal, which is to make Aiden Hutchinson, not Aiden, excuse me, DeAndre Swift, the best running back in the league, the lines are going to be a problem. Because he was a problem. He saw the touchdown run against Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Run up the middle, plants his foot in the ground, all the way to the pylon, a pylon touchdown. I mean, that is, no, most running backs can't make that run. His ability to put his foot in the ground and take off. That's special. Most running backs in the NFL, there's maybe three or four that can do that play. At the goal line, people in front of you, to the right of you, put your foot in the ground, go to your left, touchdown. But probably, guess who probably thought he couldn't do that? DeAndre Swift. So what Deuce Staley's trying to get out of him is, yeah, you can, bro. You can do this. And you're going to do this. Uh, I am reading a, a biography right now, or an autobiography right now, uh, on Grant Hill. Guess who thought he wasn't good enough to play at Duke? Grant Hill? Grant Hill. Guess who didn't think he was good enough to play in the NBA? Grant, Grant Hill. Guess at some point who thought he wasn't good enough to play varsity high school? Grant Hill. But uh, at times, it seemed that Mike Krzyzewski had to get in his ass. He said, yeah, you can do this. Other people convinced him that he was good enough to play at Duke. He was good enough to play in the NBA. He was good enough to you know, make his high school varsity team. But sometimes guys have talent, and they say, hey, I can do this. But they don't really believe it. And sometimes... The coach isn't teaching him how to do it. Coach is teaching him, yeah, bro, you can do this. And not only can you do it, but you're going to do it. 
And that's something this team has been missing for years. That's just the reality. Let's be honest. Matt, Patricia, Bob Quinn together single-handedly put this team in the gutter. They just did. Mm -hmm. The culture was awful, building toxic. Player dynamics, not all that great. You have a staff that is looking to do something. And, you know, that's actually exactly where we're going at the moment, which is Aaron Glenn. Tara Aaron Glenn yesterday stood up in front of the team and gave a message I've been waiting to hear. Whether it was from Campbell, Brad Holmes, Sheila, it didn't matter. Aaron Glenn gave the ultimate speech where, you know what? I'll sign my name to this Detroit Lions team and say, this team, more than any other team, has actual potential to be something. I'm not talking about a 9-8 and eight season in the next year or two. I'm not talking maybe win 10 games and finish in second. I'm talking they have the possibility, the opportunity to win a division title, to win a playoff game, to be something more than just a fly on the wall that got lucky one year, won 10 games, and they go back to being nothing again. The coaching dynamic they have, very interesting to me.